It was the winter of 1995. I was the ambassador for our MUN delegation in The Hague. I remember walking from our hotel, which was adjacent to the convention center where MUN was being held. It was freezing, and I hate the cold. And I was listening to my discman, which is, I guess, your equivalent of an MP3 player or something. And I was uh, listening to my favorite artist, Desiree. And as I walked through the doors of the MUN Convention Center, I felt like I was going to save the world. I was representing Armenia in their negotiations with Azerbaijan over the disputed territory of Nagorno-Karabakh. To this day, Armenians are shocked when I know of this dispute information that I credit to MUN. That day I spoke in front of the General Assembly. I wore a black and white suit, and when our delegation finished our work, all my classmates, they wanted to go out and party. We were in Holland and no parents. But all I wanted to do was go back to the hotel and work on tomorrow's resolutions. And I did. At that time, even though I knew MUN was just a simulation, I felt an underlying drive to fulfill a purpose bigger than myself. Today, 20 years later, I'm still the same person. I still have that underlying drive to fulfill a greater purpose. I still hate the cold. I still listen to cheesy inspirational music, and I would still rather go home and work on political issues rather than socialize, most of the time. And I still wear black and white suits. But this isn't about me, this is about you. The issues that you care about today provide the foundation of who you will be for the rest of your lives. You are at a critical moment in your life. You are learning hard truths about the world, and you are making decisions as to where to direct your hearts and your energy. You will soon graduate. How many ninth graders are there? Can I just see a show? Okay, you will graduate in a couple of years and go out into a world, a world where a day doesn't pass without news of tragedies. I don't have to list them. You know them. In fact, through this MUN experience, you have been forced to grapple with these problems. These nights I lay down next to my children and I anxiously think about the world that I have brought them into. And after I was invited to speak to you as high school students, I realized during one of my sleepless nights that in reality, the burden of fixing this broken world has fallen largely on your generation. The wounds that we have caused run so deep that while older generations must continue to work for the sake of humanity, it is your generation that will have to heal these wounds. And in order to do that, you have to make a conscious decision to make it part of your life's purpose. Are you all with me so far? Yes. yes. Excellent. So what I want you to do is graduate first. And go by yourself big boats and go and save the whales. You're going to need a lot of food because you have to stay in the ocean for a long time to save the whales. You guys are looking at me like, she must be joking. And of course, I'm totally joking. No one expects you to go buy a boat. So if the message here is not to go buy a boat, what is it? Well, actually, it's quite simple. The message here is, 
whatever career path you choose or whatever passion you have, you can always integrate issues of justice, empowerment, and human rights into your life in some way. Think of your life as a roadmap. You're on the highway. There are going to be intersections, small roads that branch off the highway. You can keep going on the highway to your destination, not looking left or right, or you can realize that these are junctures where different fields merge. For example, where business and women's rights merge, where law and environment merge, where medicine and war merge. This may sound difficult to understand in theory, so I'm going to give you some examples, starting with two dear friends of mine, and then a brief example of my life. So my first example is Mustafa Salame, who is a prominent Jordanian, a Jordanian mountaineer, some of you may know him. He has reached all the summits in the world, which means he has climbed the highest peak on every continent. He climbed Everest, for example. Today, he has started to ski the full route of the South Pole. He has packed half a million calories into his bag and is literally marking a new route in the southernmost point of this earth. So having found his passion, Mustafa could have focused on climbing, getting more awards, getting knighted by our king, but instead, he has chosen an additional mission for himself, which is to promote the true nature of Islam. In an age where 1.5 billion Muslims living in diverse countries have all been labeled extremist and are forced to apologize for the violent actions of a handful of lunatics, this message is increasingly important. In his new autobiography called Dreams of a Refugee, Mustafa is spreading the true messages of Islam. His commitment to a greater purpose, namely to combat Islamophobia, is critical in today's world where US presidential candidates want to shut down mosques and US governors want to ban refugees from their states. So here you see Mustafa has a passion for climbing, which he has merged with his mission to fight Islamophobia. Another example is Dr. Mads Gilbert, who is a doctor, a professor, and the medical director of emergency medicine at the University Hospital of North Norway. Mads is from a place called Tromsø. He once gave me a calendar showing the beauty of Tromsø. It's a place where you can see the northern lights, which is a colorful aurora of lights in the sky. Mads could have chosen to stay home with his daughters, watching the lights in the sky, directing work at the hospital, making a good living. But instead, since 1981, Mads chose to dedicate himself to medical solidarity work with the Palestinians. He has worked in Gaza for the past 15 years. He has made at least one trip each year to teach, organize projects, or actually carry out emergency medical tr treatment in times of war. But his mission has even gone beyond this. He is a vocal opponent of the siege of Gaza and the Israeli occupation. He writes in the preface of his new book, Night in Gaza, and I quote, I support the Palestinian people and their crystal clear right to oppose and resist a brutal occupier and an apartheid regime that is oppressing them in every area of their lives. He continues, I am not neutral. I have taken a side. This book is a plea in favor of the Palestinians, in favor of a fair political solution to the occupation of Palestine, and in favor of a peaceful world. End quote. And of course, his activism extends far beyond his latest book. He 
He's in a different country almost every day promoting this cause. So here you can see Matt has merged his medical profession with activism in solidarity with the Palestinian people. These are the examples of the junctures on the highway that I explained earlier. I'll use myself as a final brief example. As a lawyer and businesswoman, I have never strayed from my activist groups. My family and I are owners of the landmark hotel in Amman, and as much as possible, I have, I have tried to use the hotel as a platform to address environmental, social, and political issues. I'll give you two examples. The first is on gender fairness in the workplace, and I want all you ladies to pay attention. I always have known the importance of having women in the hotel and in the workplace in general, and I have always prioritized hiring women and the needs of our new female recruits. But only recently did I realize how important it really is to dedicate myself to the cause of women's economic empowerment in the Arab world. I was invited to speak on a panel at Harvard University last week on women in business, and in preparation for it, I learned about the shockingly low percentage of women in the workforce in the Arab world. I learned about how education is not translating into increased participation in the workforce. And I learned about how many women are studying tourism, but don't end up working in the field because of cultural norms. But most important, I learned that I need to adopt the cause of women's economic empowerment as my own. My goal is to support existing efforts to that end and to use our company as an example of how a workplace can be female and family friendly to support women in their multiple roles as wife, mother, and career women. Another example is the environment. In our company, we recognize the need to incorporate sustainability practices in our business. Our most recent initiative is quite interesting. It is an aquaponic dome that we are building on one of the roofs in the hotel. Aquaponics is the marriage of aquaculture, which is the raising of fish, and hydroponics, which is the growing of plants without soil. In order to grow plants and fish, together in one integrated system. One of the benefits of aquaponics is that it uses the minimal amount of water, which is obviously of importance since Jordan is the third driest country in the world. If all goes to plan, my hope is that our dome will supply the hotel with fresh produce and fish as a first step. As a second step, we could introduce the method to our community, and beyond that, to communities in need who have limited space and water. Everyone deserves the right to food, especially nutritious and locally sourced food. This initiative could contribute to that effort. Okay, I think that's enough about that. Of course, I'm involved with other initiatives, but we can talk about those later. My idea was just to give you some examples of what can be done. I should mention that one common ideological thread between myself Dr. Maz and Mustafa Salame is that we have all adopted the cause of BDS as part of our mission. And BDS is the Boycott, divest Divestment and Sanctions Movement against Israel until it respects Palestinian rights um, and international law. And our focus as a BDS Jordan is to eliminate Israeli products in Jordan and work against companies that assist Israel in maintaining the occupation. For example, G4S is a company that assists Israel in its prison system, in the checkpoint, in the apartheid wall, and it also is complicit in the sense that it trains the police force. And our next action against G4S is a protest at the UNDP headquarters in Amman to demand that the UN stops contracting with uh, G4S. You're all welcome to come to the protest, of course, ask your parents, and better yet, you can bring your parents. But perhaps there are some of you, like the two gentlemen leaving the room, that wouldn't think to come to such a protest. Perhaps you're thinking school is nearly over, and I want to go home and play Fallout 4, or catch the most recent issue, you know, episode of the Kardashians. What is happening? Sorry, did I hit a bear? 
the fight for humanity because humanity deserves better. I know it may be hard to believe nowadays, but the core of human values is to be good. And the tragedies we are witnessing are a result of dysfunctional social and economic systems and power structures. Together, we can recreate them. Confucius, the philosopher, defined humanity to be the love of people. And he said, if you want to make a stand, help others make a stand. And that's what I attempted to do for you today. Thank you so much for having me.